where I am presently working. It's a Central Soil and Materials Station working under Department of Water Resources, uh, Ganga Regeneration and River Development uh, under the umbrella of Ministry of uh, Jal Shakti. And uh, we have been, uh, uh, we have this organization has started uh, since 1954 and working especially for the water resources sector, especially the hydroelectric project, which is not barring from uh, working with the other projects. I think I am audible to everyone, right, Mr. Rao? Yes, sir. For uh, other sectors like the railways, roads, uh, thermal power stations, and uh, other projects, other projects also, and mainly wherever uh, the problems comes, like uh, the legal uh, uh, battle is there between some clients, the court special specifically orders uh, the clients or uh, directs the people to. Uh, our institution. So we are proud to be associated with uh, every work and uh, especially for the detailed project report which is submitted for the sanction of the government of India. We are uh, one among the four institutions which involves the clearance of that. So and we are stationed in New Delhi specifically and we don't have any other branches in their uh, uh, country. But we, our uh, engineers and I myself go to different projects spreaded all over the uh, uh, India and uh, to the neighboring countries also like uh, Myanmar, um, Bhutan, Nepal and so on. And even our people were stationed in Afghanistan for construction of the big dam and the friendship dam of uh, Salma Dam project. And uh, we, are, we were associated with, with many uh, quality control or quality assurance of uh, many projects. Our people uh, were stationed in Bhutan also for uh, many projects. Like uh, I, since I am working um, for my entire career in soil mechanics, uh, my specific uh, field in embankment dam, which will give the distresses, what all the distresses we, which we can uh, in, uh, expect in that, we experience it. And what we have to do, we are just ending with that. And uh, I'll take one hour exactly. I'll try to finish it as quickly as possible. And uh, for, uh, uh, since I have to finish it within, uh, within an hour, I may have to skip some of the presentations. with the professor Rao, you, you may get it. And now starting with my Your audio is uh, stopped. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, no, it is working. Why it is not moving further? So, yeah. Madam, spotlight they can use. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, I'll just begin with the introduction and uh, what all the distress and manifestation you expect in a embankment dam. And with the geotechnical investigations, what all the investigations you have to th do. And uh, I'll ending up with the, some case studies. Uh, some case studies, very briefly, I'll be explaining. And one of the case studies, I'll give it in full detail, uh, which had the distress. So failure causes uh, maybe because of the foundation deterioration. Maybe the cause of that foundation deterioration may be removal of solid and soluble materials, rock plucking or undercutting. The foundation instability may be because of the liquefaction, slides, or subsidence, or fault movement. Detective, defective spillways may be because of the obstructions, broken linings, evidence of overtaxing uh, over of available capacity, or faulty gates and hoists. Defective outlets may be obstruction, silt accumulations, faulty gates and hoists gate position and location. Concrete deterioration may be because of the alkali, alkali aggregate reaction, freezing toying or leaching.
Concrete dam defects may be because of the high uplift pressure, unanticipated uplift distribution, differential displacements and deflections, overstressing. Embankment dam defects, if you see here, the liquefaction potential, slope instability, excessive leakage, removal of solid and soluble materials, slope erosion. Here specifically, embankment dam may be constructed for the roadways and the railways also. We are particularly talking about the water retaining structure, the embankment dams constructed for retaining the water. We are discussing about that only in further in this lecture. The reservoir margin defects may be perviousness of the reservoir rim, instability, inherent weakness of the natural barriers. What are the different types of embankment dams? It may be earth dam or earth fill dam, which is more than 50% of the total volume is formed of compacted inorganic soil obtained from a borrow area. Homogeneous earth fill dam an embankment dam constructed of similar earth material throughout except for the inclusion of internal drains or drainage blankets distinguished from a zone earth fill dam. So if you don't provide any uh, drainages in between like a, in a vertical filter or inclined filter, it tends to, since we are using the embankment for retaining the water, it the earth material may saturate fully at, at the full reservoir conditions. So we have to keep slow down or lower down the periodic surfaces at the full reservoir condition. In order to keep the periodic surface low, we have to provide these drainages also. That can be of many types that we'll see. It may be a zone dam, which is composed of the zones of selected materials having different degrees of porosity, permeability, and density. We are not blessed with the full because the embankment dams are the natural uh, uh, structure which is built with the natural material. We cannot say we'll co uh, construct with only clay or sand or clay sand or this kind of uh, material which is having clays of this or silts of this or gravels of this. We can't, we are not that fortunate to have the specific gradation of the material. So we have to be satisfied with what is available. According to the availability of the material, we have to design that uh, structure. The rock fill dam and embankment dam, which is more than 50% of the total volume is composed of compacted or dumped material, natural or crushed rock. So the earth dam, when it formed, what is the first, first of man's engineering structure is the earth dam only. The earliest known instinct earth dam were between 1500 BC to 200 BC. One of the first earth dam was 17.7 kilometer long, 21.3 meter high, contained about 13 million meter cube of earth. Earliest Indian dams were from 500 AD, particularly in the period after 1000 AD. Largest earth dam was constructed 450 years ago. So. If you see what is uh, the condition in the Indian scenario, the largest earth dam of an olden era was 45.7 meter high in constructed in Spain. Next largest dam was 38.1 high Baden Dam in England constructed during 1876. The dams can be constructed for many purpose, maybe a single purpose or a multi-purpose. Single purpose means it is constructed for only for irrigation or multiple means it may be for irrigation, it may be for hydropower, it may be for water supply, it may be for flood control, recreation, navigation, fish, breedings and other uh, utilities also. This is, this is the scenario, but what is the scenario in uh, India? So out of the, this is, uh, this is specially taken uh, from the National Register for Large Dams um, issued by CW Central Water Commission in the year 2019. So if you see out of uh, the whole dams, 65% of the dam are earth dams and 13% are rock fill dams, rest is others.
and these are all the highest dam i just wanted to show you the highest dams which you can which are registered for uh, its height the highest dam is 335 which is a earthen rock fill dam and the highest earthen rock fill dam in india is the terry dam which is of 260.5 meters the next highest dam is the coal dam of 163 to 168 meter high in uh, himachal pradesh in the across the river uh, sadlej and if you see the total uh, dam which is constructed already the completed dam is 534 out of the earth dam the last dam we are talking about more than 15 meter is the from the deepest foundation to the crest the most of the dams constructed are in the state of maharashtra if you aware of the soil map of india maharashtra is very rich in possessing the swelling soil or expansive soil but locally it is called as the black cotton soil like even gujarat also most of its land is locked up with the expansive soil only the next state is the madhya pradesh even the un under construction project if you see the uh, majority of the dam is be earth dam is being constructed in maharashtra that's what i wanted to show now the if you see the history of the dam earthen dam construction uh, the most of the dams were constructed during the year 1971 to 1990 that is the year where most of the dams failed also even the this is the world scenario as well as in india as well the fourth oldest dam in the world is constructed by king karihala chola in of chola dynasty in the second century ad located in the across the river kaveri which is a very small one even today it is functioning very well and maintained very good but improvements were made by sir arthur cotton who is uh, the uh, father of irrigation uh, projects in india he is being named as and he has made this uh, improvement during 719th century so this is very close by uh, within 5 uh, kilometers from the city called trichy you can visit this structure there well maintained one but uh, that is a small dam and we, we are not very new to the construction of the big dam uh, rockfield dam we can say this is the dam which is the ninth oldest earth dam in the world constructed by sri asuri uh, near the city bangalore this lake for uh, uh, for closing the lake of this 230 meter high and 140 meter long uh, rockfield dam was constructed and it is still maintained uh, very nicely near the city bangalore and in this lake is providing um, water supply to the city bank and different types of embankment dam it may be on uh, homogeneous embankment dam on impervious foundation or pervious foundation and why we have to go for embankment dam that itself is a very long process why the many dams are there gravity dam masonry dam or earthen dam or rockfield dam or any dam how you select that one that depends on different category like topography selection of material climate and everything so what i said is the drains are provided in the homogeneous dam to keep the phreatic surface low in order to avoid the saturation of the downstream slope of the structure and here this is the centrally placed clay core with the embankment material or the rock fill material it is placed on central core embankment on impervious foundation it can be um, um, constructed on the pervious foundation also but you have to provide uh, exact contact with the rock foundation also so the homogeneous embankment dam consists of entirely one material only the good material for construction of the homogeneous material is the clayey gravels and uh, except the for slope protection or wave protection whatever provided uh, riprap is being provided the section is made of low permeability material and requires flatter slopes than a zoned section usually constructed from clay 
sandy clay, clayey sand, and gravel sand clayey soils. May also be constructed from more permeable soils such as silty sand, sand, and sandy gravels provided seepage is within the acceptable limit, but it is not suitable for a large heights. Modified homogeneous dam has toe drain, horizontal drain, and the vertical drain as well. The zoned embankment dam consists of different zones of different types of soils. There is an impervious zone called the core inside, which provides the which is which possesses totally impervious uh, drainage characteristics. And the outer zones on both the sides are called as the shell or casing material, which may be of semi-pervious or pervious material. So these different uh, zones are separated by filters so, so that the migration of the finer particles is uh, arrested. The rock fill dams are best suitable for the seismic zone because the gravels are good absorbent material of the seismic forces. It consists of various sizes of rock to provide stability to an impervious core or membrane, which is constructed very verti vertically or uh, with the steep slopes and which provides totally water tightness. Adopted to locations where good rock is available, foundation rock is or near the ground, ground surfaces, long periods of high rainfall may make construction of an earth dam impracticable. Rock fill dams may be different kinds of there. Central earth clay core with the central uh, earth clay core, upstream sloping earth core, concrete phase to rock fill dam. The selection of uh, the type of the embankment dam based on the topography, based on the overall economics of a project with consideration of the dam, spillway, river diversion, outlet works, etc. Project components are inter interrelated as diversion tunnel is longer for earth dam than rock fill dam. Spillway excavation generates rock fill, earth fill, and random fill for use in the embankment. Large floods can be allowed to overtop the dam so as to avoid larger diversion of the tunnels and the high copper dams. And an embankment dam fail fails when you allow the overtopping of, uh, over the dam also. So I will show you the percentage of uh, failure because of this overtopping as well. So narrow steep sided valleys favors this uh, concrete faced uh, rock fill dam. Use of extensive filters where differential settlement in abutments are anticipated may be avoided by adopting CFRD. Geology and the foundation conditions. Soil foundation favors the earth dam. Strong, low permeability rock foundation is suited to any type of dam. Limestone foundation requires extensive grouting to limit seepage. Therefore, to carry out grouting along the dam construction, earth come uh, rock fill dam with the upstream inclined core may be adopted. Sedimentary rocks, particularly interbedded weak clay stone and mud stone favors the earth dam. Areas with the deep weathered rock favor the earth dam. With the available construction material, the material should be available in sufficient quantity with a reasonable haul distance from the site. Materials available or near the site may be soils for embankment, rock for the embankment and riprap, sand, gravel, and crushed stone, etc., for providing the drainages like filters. Availability of the suitable rocks favors the rock fill dams. If suitable soils are found in nearby borough area, an earth dam is more economical. If earth fill material is not available, then concrete phase rock fill dam is an option. If the borrow area has two soils, earth fill may be zoned. Blending of soils is generally avoided as it leads to increased cost. Seismicity, like I said before, in the seismic zones, rock fill dam is suitable more than an earth dam. Climate 
earth dam construction is very difficult in wet weather it is advantageous to adopt cfrd or ecrd with the sloping upstream core to continue placement of the rock fill in wet weather and constructing the face slab or core in the fair weather very arid areas having shortage of water for construction so the fa it favors cfrd as compared to the earth dam so coming to the distresses what all this distresses manifest can be the failure of the earthen dams it may be because of the hydraulic failure seepage failure or the structural failure hydraulic failure means because of the overtopping of dams erosion of the upstream surface erosion of the downstream surface and erosion of the downstream toe seepage failure may be because of the piping through the dam why it happens piping through the foundation conduit leakage structural failure may be failure of downstream face during the steady seepage condition failure of upstream face during sudden drawdown failure due to sliding of foundation damage due to burrowing animals failure of dam due to earthquake during construction poor water pressure built up during the construction and for and reduction of shear strength due to thixotropical property so the embankment dam fails after the construction because of the hydraulic fracturing or internal erosion or piping excess hydrostatic pressure due to rapid drawdown also makes the embankment fails after construction reduction in shear strength weathering and swelling of compacted soil settlement and cracking and earthquake forces factors influencing influencing the cracking failure if the construction of the mom, the if the embankment is constructed with the low construction moisture content sills and silty clays with the d50 and plasticity index less than 50 here again we are trying to construct the smallest of the uh, embankment also for the diversion uh, for uh, constructions to be commencing we are trying to construct the diversion uh, embankments or any small dikes even with the plasticity with, with the soil which is having um, as low as 7 also so 7 means uh, that is why we always restrict it we strictly say the plasticity index should, should be less than 15 but we are allowing the plasticity index from 12 to 15 also because for searching for uh, the soil possessing plasticity index more than 15 is very difficult in some of the regions so we allow that but we in no case we can allow even for a very small structure or temporary structure we cannot uh, allow the soil to be used for the construction of the embankment dam if it is less than 10 or 12 so steep rock abutment and there is no contact pr uh, proper contact is there between the uh, abutment and the structure abrupt change in the dam height even well graded soils if compacted with the less to less moisture content and exposed to further weathering also undergo cracking in one of the case history which i will be presenting i'll tell you what was the problem there even for compaction also uh, if you understand the moisture and the dry density relationship you will able to correlate how what we are talking about so if we are not maintaining a proper compaction uh, and are compacted with the less moisture that will tend to lead to a cracking crack formation due to arching effect stiff and brittle material silty clays with low plasticity may lead to cracking failure and igneous residual soft soil rapidly disintegrating coarse particles subsequent saturation causes impo uh, important settlements and factors influencing the piping failure may be because of progressive backward erosion progressive backward sloughing or reveling of the saturation down downstream slope seepage takes place in the form of well defined 
water veins, drying cracks, inadequately compacted material between compact embankment and foundation, relatively pervious horizontal compaction layer. Slope slides may be because of the dimension of the dam, nature of the embankment material, or with the development of the water pressure. So the major components of the embankment dams is shown in this figure. This is the embankment dam. This portion is called as the crest. This is the reservoir and this is the upstream slope. This is the downstream slope. And the toe drain is provided on the downstream end and it, which is having a plunge pool here and which is having a conduit also. So basically, if you use a pipe system uh, for the conduit, in, within this embankment, the failure may take place if proper contact is the, not there between this conduit and the embankment, then it may fail at this place. And even clogging of this uh, toe drain may cause the development of the poor water pressure within the structure and then cause failure. And if the contact between this abutment and the structure is not proper, then also uh, the structure may fail. And when you place this structure on the foundation, foundation preparation is also very much required. So we, from here onwards, we'll go for common problems, which is found on the dams. So it may be because of the trees and bush, bush and I have seen many of the structures which I am visit, visiting. One of it I, I can never forget. The forest department has planted uh, many trees on the downstream slope of uh, this. When I visited the structure, I had to tell them to remove all those things. And one of the uh, case study I will show you the big trees which is uh, which has caused the distress in that environment. The animals can cause. Uh, distress to the structure and burrowing uh, rats, rodents activities may cause the distress and settlement in the crest of the dam and wave erosion can uh, cause, uh, in turn, uh, cause ero um, distress on the upstream slope of it. Already I have told you that uh, the leakage out of the conduit may uh, induce the internal erosion Internal erosion because of the material uh, property also can uh, cause uh, distress and the cracking of any or any kind. There may be a desiccation crack or transverse crack or longitudinal crack. Any kind of cracks may cause distress to the structure. So you have the boil from the downstream uh, end of it, downstream side of the structure, it, it will cause the problem to the structure. So what the trees on the embankment should not be planted or allowed to grow on the dams. Tree, tree root systems create pathways or water and can damage the dam if they are uprooted. Seepage through the dam damaged uh, by the tree trees should not be allowed to grow on the dam. The recommended action may be do not allow it Remove the largest trees and their roots and backfill the holes with well compacted soil. Don't dump any soil on it. Before removing the roots, the reservoir should be lowered to reduce the risk of serious seepage problem developing during the removal. If possible, remove trees at the toe of the dam to provide a four to five meter buffer around the dam. Next is Maybe be probable causes, uh, cause and probable consequences may be areas of trees and bushes and open water provide ideal habitat for burrowing animals. And it may, the rodent activities, of course, it will have a hole. Sometimes you can see the, the upstream side from the downstream. So it is through because of the rodent. One. What do you have to do? You have to start repairing those. Here, this is shown from the downstream side, the upstream reservoir, the water uh, can be seen here. 
and it may be because of the inadequate vegetation and the erosion and uh, maybe the sub land subsidence have uh, taken place on the riprap provided or the failure of the filter materials provided in that better you have to repair this uh, materials by lowering the wat water level in the uh, reservoir it may be overgazing poor weed control concentrated runoff and wave erosion are common causes for poor vegetative cover and erosion on the dam so what you have to do areas of sparse vegetation should be reseeded with perennial grasses each spring or fall so you have to control the weeds and it may be because of the obstruction in the principal or auxiliary spillways so this is a clogged one so you have to the inlet completely plugged with the debris so you just remove those debris and try to uh, around the spillway and try to be, make it workable here again you can see inadequate trenches of rocks you can see here and cracks and slides maybe uh, only a centimeter or two wide but 0.5 to 1 meter deep usually a depth of more than 0.5 meter means that a serious condition is present shallow cracks may be harmless desiccation cracks only but all cracks over 0.3 meter deep should be closely checked and evaluated cracks may be of also be a sign of foundation movement or failure the beginning of the embankment failure or a surface slide for example 6 meter long line of recently dislodged riprap along the upstream slope could indicate a crack underneath the riprap longitudinal crackings may be the sign of localized instability differential settlement foundation settlement and movement between the adjacent sections of the embankment vertical longitudinal it may be vertical displacements on the crest or usually accompanied by displacements or bulging on the upstream or downstream faces of the dam longitudinal cracks can allow storm water and reservoir water to enter the embankment when water enters the embankment the strength of the embankment material next to the crack may be reduced the lower strength of the embankment material can lead to work on uh, uh, accelerate the slides and slope instability slope stability failure transverse crack cracking may be a sign of differential settlement or movement between the adjacent segments within the embankment or the underlying foundation transverse crack is very very uh, poses a definite threat to the safety and integrity of the dam so you have to avoid it how to avoid all these problems you have to construct the embankment while constructing itself with the proper quality control and quality assurances with proper design actually so the probable uneven movement settlements of the cracks in the crest is uneven movement between the adjacent sections of the dam embankment may cause settlements and transverse cracking cracks and settlements can have create a point for water to flow through or over the dam when reservoir levels reach the crack or settlement it can lead to erosion and rapid failure of the dam embankment slopes that are too steep or saturated soils can cause longitudinal cracking and slides to develop causing serious damages to large sections of the dam so what you have to do shallow settlements should be filled with top soil and reseeded shallow cracks should be filled with mud pack mud pack is made of by adding 90% of the earth with 10% of the cement mixture until a slurry of thin cement consistency is attained deep or recurring settlements and cracks or large slides should be evaluated by a qualified engineer to determine the cause and supervise all steps necessary to reduce the danger to the dam and correct the condition so some dams have drains or relief wells to control seepage over the time 
the um, drain can become plugged submerged or buried and lose their effectiveness in controlling the seepage through the dam so cloudy or mudding flow from the drain could be a sign that water is causing erosion inside the dam and you what you have to do mark the location of the drain outlets and t posts so that they are easily easily located during the inspections notify the lower uh, the uh, notify and the lower the reservoir level and uh, do this internal erosion of the earth dams or because of the internal erosion of the soil particles formed within the dam by water that seeps through the dam is one of the most causes of the failure of the earth dams internal erosion is especially dangerous because there may be no external evidence or only subtle evidence that is taking place a dam may breach within few hours after evidence of the internal erosion becomes obvious like what had happened in the teton dam it's a very interesting case uh, classic case of uh, the, just after the construction of the dam and uh, internal erosion may develop the first time water is impounded behind a dam or it may develop over many years you cannot assume that your dam is safe against the internal erosion just because it has performed satis satisfactorily for many years internal erosion failures are more often associated with the penetration of dams such as outlet pipes buried in the embankment and concrete spillways that cross the embankment yeah this is the muddy water which comes out of the corrugated uh, metal Uh, outlet pipes it's a indication of the failure uh, internal erosion and what we are looking for the muddy waters and all and i'll just skip uh, what we have to do generic uh, cause during the project pl planning lack of clear uh, scope conflicting the client expectation design errors may be because of the conceptual uh, design errors lack of redundancy failure to identify all loads and load combinations calculation errors may be specification deficiencies and failure considering the surveillance monitor and maintenance most of the case uh, cases are coming because of the surveillance moni uh, monitoring and uh, maintenance problems only construction errors of course inappropriate temporary works improper sequencing improper method of timing of construction excessive construction loads material deficiency of course this also leads to the structural failure of the dam material inconsistency premature uh, deterioration and uh, fabrication defects and safety inspection of the dams routine periodic inspection is very important by trained and experienced engineers from the dam safety organization at least twice a year pre monsoon and post monsoon period examination of general health of the dam and appurtenant uh, structure is required periodically and preparedness of the dam and hydro mechanical structures for handling expected floods comprehensive dam dam safety evaluation is also required once in a 10 year and more comprehensive examination is required multidisciplinary team for holistic view on the uh, operation of the dam and the behavior of the dam is required may order additional field and laboratory investigations as well as numeral simulations so coming to the investigation typical the type typical dam safety investigations may include sampling and testing methods to define i'm not going to talk about detailly about what is that geotechnical investigation how it is to be done what all the different uh, things i will talk about the parameters which are required for assessing the uh, safety of the dam only the potential or liquefaction seepage and piping static stability collapse of foundation soils cracking 
and emergency repair and dam remediation activities typically require some drilling components to collect data so this i'll just uh, specifically we just go for uh, we have many uh, in the already constructed dams when we go for the inspection we should not take a decision that we will go for a drilling of holes and do the spt or cpt the selection of this particular uh, site or uh, location on the already constructed dam is very very important you should not puncture the periodic uh, surface in the dam that is the main uh, reason you have to select a particular location and particular place to, to study the safety evaluation of the existing embankment and we have many compaction controls we have many methods to uh, determine the in situ density of the embankment but which one to use that that the limitation of each of the method also you should understand and for determining the uh, moisture content of the existing dam also is very very important so you you may not uh, be able to do the coquetter method or sand replacement method or uh, the water and the ring replacement method sometimes you may have to adopt uh, specific uh, methodology for taking the uh, big particle this is the photograph Uh, the in situ density being measured for the clay core material of the terry dam specifically if we talk about terry dam it's very interesting to talk about it because the clay core it is called as a clay core but it is the height of the dam is too uh, large means 160.5 meter and in the upper portion of the dam uh, even the 80 mm size of the gravels were mixed and the uh, taking those kinds of uh, uh, material in the core cutter it's not possible so we have to take a clod and then take the weight of it and the volume of it and determine the in situ density of it of that particular uh, material so th this is what how it was done that this uh, photographs narrates that and this is the water replacement method how you have to do it. this is the shell material or the rock fill material for which it is being done and uh, embankment material it should be a impervious core material recommend with the recommended grain size distribution no oversized materials are allowed it should be totally impermeable it should meet the requirements of physical and mechanical properties filters material filter materials should be free draining material conforming to the specified grain size distribution free from organic or undesirable materials and size and it should meet the requirement physical and mechanical properties and it should be compatible with the base material as well the filter material suitable su suitability analysis using the d50 d10 d85 and uh, d50 also should be checked according to the appropriate is codes the rock fill material should be hard durable sound against weathering resistant to excessive breakage during the handling and compaction operations should be a free draining conforming to the specified gradation borrowed from specified quarry or riverbed material the behavior of uh, the characteristics of the quarried material is different from the characteristics of the riverbed material so it should ultimately meet the physical and mechanical properties of the specified standards so clay core material or the embankment material um, the material or soil used for the construction of the embankment dam also should be a well graded material because well graded material will will have a impervious the permeability characteristics will be very fine if it is a poorly graded or a gap graded one it should not be used for the construction of the dam so it should be a totally impervious because it is used for retaining the water so it should be low permeable non dispersive so nowadays it has become very mandatory for Uh, 
uh, identifying the soil dispersivity characteristics of that soil to be used for embankment dam or earth clay core material in an earthen rock fill dam. So presently, the IS codes are not available for uh, characterizing uh, for the soil dispersivity identification, but we are, CSMRS is involved in formulating these codes. Four tests are done. One is uh, a double hydrometer test with the dispersing agent and without the dispersing agent. Another is crumb test. Third is pinhole test and the pore water extract analysis. Uh, it's a qualitative test only, I'll say. The pinhole test and the pore water extract test, we can somewhat say it is a quality, quantitative test. But the consensus arrived based on these four tests are, say, arrives at the category, whether it is a dispersive soil in a non-dispersive soil or an intermediate soil. Pore water extract means soil uh, is sa saturated soil is taken and the water is extracted from that uh, saturated soil and the different salts are uh, measured so like sodium, calcium, magnesium uh, uh, and the percentage of the sodium soil among these four salts are uh, relatively compact and the more the sodium the more the dispersive characteristics you will be classified with. So the low erodible soils, erodible soils, of course, we cannot afford to have. It should be a flexible soil, low compressible, and it should possess a good shear strength characteristics. So for this embankment material, we should do grain size distribution, Atterberg's limits, shrinkage limit, specific gravity, poor compaction, sorry, proctor compaction, shear strength, one dimensional consolidation, permeability and soil dispersivity and chemical analysis also. I missed that one. So this, uh, uh, this uh, table I have taken from uh, the code IS 121169, 1987. The recent also uh, has come. And which one is good for the homogeneous dam and which one is good for the zone dam. Like I said, the clay gravels are the suitable material for this. And the organic soils cannot be allowed to be used for the construction of the dam. But we have an experience of allowing an organic soil after uh, the improvement of a stabilization of that soil because uh, the project is, is located in Sikkim where no other material was available. So we wanted uh, the blended material should be used for that. And in some of the area in Jharkhand also, Good materials were not available, but there some two borrow areas were there. One was not suitable, and one was uh, one was not suitable. One borrow area material was not suitable because it was uh, pervious in nature or semi-pervious in nature, and one was highly compressible material. So, by blending these two uh, types of soil, we can get a good material. So, why not we we can go for that? But somebody may ask me, blending or is it possible to blend two materials or the stabilizing agents and get a good material? Yes, with the um, good uh, latest technology available with us, we can use it. We are not blessed with a good material naturally available. So we have to go with this. So if the proper compaction is there, then we will be able to construct the dam with full quality control and quality assurance have to be achieved. What are the materials to be avoided if you have to avoid the distress in the, the embankment dam? The organic material should be avoided. Decomposing material, material with high proportion of mica. Mica is having the erosion uh, kind of, uh, it, it's not having cohesion at all which forms slip surfaces in the soil of low clay percentages. Calcitic soils, such as clays derived from limestone, which although generally stable, are usually very permeable. Fine sills, which are unsuitable for any zones of the dam because it can cause erosion. Piping. Cyst and shales, which although often gravelly in texture, tend to disintegrate when wet system may also contain a high portion of the mica. Sodic soils, of course, cannot be available. Sodic soils are the main culprit of the dispersive uh, soils. 
and these are the different codes which is used for the uh, in relation to the embankment dams and for subsurface exploration these are the codes and there are codes for uh, providing the distresses uh, failures and uh, solution to uh, embank uh, earth and rock fill dam there is a code available you can refer to that code as well and uh, yeah coming to the categories of the dam failures overtopping quality problems poor management disasters and others uh, i am not going into the details if you see here overtopping 36.4 percentages quality problems 42.5% and uh, everything else is less so the quality problem tops everything we have to construct the structure very carefully with the proper density and proper with the proper moisture content and among the uh, quality problems also piping in the dam body and foundation tops it all 58% the sliding of the dam body 18.3% piping around the spillway is very meager one so coming these are all the dams embankment dams which is failed and i like to show uh, the failure of the dams in india and the latest one where which one i have i am going to show you is this one in detail but in 10 minutes okay so the dam failures 44% of it breaches failure due to flooding so this i can skip in indian scenario the dam failures are because of project, poor project planning poor investigations poor design unsatisfactory location or site selection faulty or poor construction practices poor construction rescheduling and poor coordination between design and construction unit so the case study is first one it's a project irrigation project in maharashtra maharashtra already i told you i have mentioned already the expansive presence of expansive soil this is a uh, vidarbha region some of the mega project which is having this is the canal system you can see the longitudinal crack and uh, Uh, the transfers cracking in on the uh, canal lining you can see the different patches on the embankment uh, you can see means repair is being taken and because of the presence of uh, swelling soil here the concrete lining fails bulges and fails uh, in the cutting portion of this uh, uh, structure it fails and they are constructing um, Uh, this is a retaining wall a rigid structure of retaining wall is being constructed for stopping the slippage of this one this happens in this we we expect in the cutting portion of it if the filling section is constructed properly with the proper compaction and the uh, moisture especially uh, when you deal with the uh, expansive soil or black cotton soil then we have procedures of uh, placing the comb Uh, cns material in the canal sections but uh, which soil is to be classified as cns material and uh, cns means cohesive non swelling soils which one where you will be limiting that is the problem and this is another project devana balakare dam in karnataka which is a, a run off scheme only not a big dam very small earthen dam but uh, Oh, throughout the year the water be is being retained with this structure but if you see here in the downstream the swamps the water is being uh, accumulated here uh, the water going from the what uh, reservoir is being accumulated here and making a swamp and it is a very threat or de death trap for cattle which is because it is greenery because of the presence of the water so cattle are coming here and it is trapped it is a death trap for those people those things if you see here there is a movement of this uh, downstream slope and this is the toe drain you can see here and this settlement pillars also it is moved from this view you can see the subsidence of the downstream slope here this is because of it because of the uh, the tow drains are in operational in addition to this what we are doing is it's 
clogged and uh, we are not thinking properly and planning properly poor management the, the, when we visited this one uh, as a dam safety review panel then we saw concrete uh, slabs were casted and placed on the downstream next to the structure on the downstream uh, just adjacent to the downstream so we have to tell them what they have to do to rectify all those things and for many years uh, we have to be after them for uh, rectifying this one this is a classic case subarnareka it's a very mega project subarnareka irrigation project in odisha four states or five states are being benefited with this project like jharkhand chatisgarh um, odisha um, some part of telangana and west bengal as well so because of the uh, one kilometer stretch of failure this is because of the expansive soil it the slope fails so we have what we have to provide we have identified it is not because of the dispersive soil it is because of the expansive soil only and we have to say uh, okay if you go for this many attempts of giving the solution and the the remedies were failed so ultimately what we had to do is we have to remove this entire stretch of expansive soil to make the entire mega project to happen and provide them the material which is to be placed in place of this expansive soil what material where from we will get the material available with them when it is referred to csmr as we ask for what is the material available next to your project then murram soils were available and when we tested it it was having a permeability of very low drainage characteristics so but for the construction of the uh, embankments for the canal uh, the permissible uh, per permeability criteria should be tens of power of minus 5 cm per second so in order to achieve that what we have to do it we have to blend it with the sand and then get the uh, optimum amount of sand to be blend with that and we have given that percentage of how much it is to be uh, the muram soil red soil or how much is to be the sand then uh, at present recently this project has been commenced successfully by the odisha irrigation project and csmrs is very proud to be associated with that project now the one project i was telling you the kanhar irrigation project which is a very um, old project which was 1980s it was started and more than um, 30 years it has been um, both two parties are there politically influenced and the design also so some portion of it uh, it is constructed already 30 years old constructions are there if you can see and there are rain cuts on the downstream slope as well as the upstream slopes as well and we have to see and to some extent the to some height it has been uh, constructed and the height of the embankment dam is to be raised further further how to raise that one without proper preparation it cannot be raised so you you have to check the toe drain which you are say, seeing here these toe drains have been constructed during 1980s itself and whether it is functioning or not that is to be checked before doing it and when you are um, in in uh, in uh, urge of completing a structure uh, for uh, finishing that uh, construction of that structure then you tend to engage many contractors and giving different portions because the total length of this uh, dam is 4.5 kilometers in the eastern part of uttar pradesh and for reaching this project itself it is very tedious and uh, i visited that project as well and then i visited then i saw there was no proper compaction was there uh, with uh, compaction was achieved very high with very low moisture content so i had to stop uh, the projects for some time to tell them what is the 
uh, moisture which plays its uh, um, moisture criteria which is very important for the construction of the dam and this uh, dam uh, is resumed now another problem was there was a crack uh, rock uh, big rock material within that uh, embankment alignment was there and they wanted uh, didn't want to blast this material they wanted this rock also to be part of that embankment but you, it can be a part of it it is better you don't have it but if you have a con proper contact with this but this this is not coming in the tail end of the embankment it is coming uh, just next to the composite section of uh, uh, the, the, next to the spillway it was coming so which is very dangerous so we have to csmr has to intervene and it has to give its opinion how it is to be done and we have uh, listed out what they have to do it and we have given and this is one more project uh, last year i think we I, we have visited as a member of the dam safety experts mm, this is the willingdon dam in the state of tamil nadu which is having slippage of slopes for many years and what is the reason for slippage of the course uh, every time sinking of the top bund longitudinal cracks you can see it here and flow of mud at the downstream slope upheaval of the downstream beyond the toe and everything and this is the uh, dam section you can see uh, this portion also is constructed using the uh, highly compressible clay material i can say and that is why that is contained in the harting zone and in the casing zone little bit of uh, semi pervious material was were used for uh, construction of this dam uh, and the horizontal blanket drains were provided with connecting with the tow drain rock tow drain and you can see here in the upstream uh, slope end of the upstream slope longitudinal cracks were there and the movement of uh, uh, this uh, upstream slope you can see here and in order to um, um, bypass the problematic zones especially these zones a new um, embankment was constructed straight here avoiding this uh, embankment and this new dam also was having the rain cuts and there is a movement of this and it is not properly covered and see you can see the cracks over here because of the poor compaction and those things and the moisture was also it was too dry so you have to um, rehabilitate these things and then you have to provide a solution to it and then rectify that and that has been done and now uh, after two uh, one and a half years it has been rescued now and there is one more tank this is the cholavaram tank which is located very near to chennai which which is one of the lake which provides a drinking water supply to uh, the city madras uh, chennai and which is having cracks in the downstream faces um, and you can see the movement of the uh, dam in the upstream faces okay and loosely and these cracks were try to um, rectify by dumping the loose materials at the downstream phase and this uh, again the uh, land subsidence in the downstream phase as well but generally what i am experiencing in experiencing is if there is a movement of the slope people are trying to place more material on that moving slope uh, and providing more problem to that moving uh, so, uh, slopes so which is to be avoided so everywhere we say that only to everyone this is an inter interesting uh, case garada earthen dam uh, project which is located in uh, uh, rajasthan it's an embankment dam uh, medium irrigation project across the river mangli and uh, three uh, it is in the confluence of three nalas which is of 4.271 kilometers and the maximum height of this dam is 30 meter dam failed on uh, 15th august 
It's said to be a homogeneous embankment section constructed with the CL or CA type soil type. And this is what the section should have, having a core material. What I can understand is that this is a carting zone and a filter here and a casing material here with the riprap on the upstream slope. But when we, it had failed in the last closer section, dam closer section. And this is what you can see after the failure has happened. And other than when we investigated after, uh, during 2011 or so, it failed in August 2010 or so, we could see other than the preliminary investigation at the feasibility stage, no detailed investigations of the down foundation or the materials were carried out and there was no documentations available. So adequate construction planning was not there. Hurried constructions were there, especially while closing the section, it was hurried. Adequate thought was not given to the planning and viability of the dam closure sequence. Dam closure section was completed within a period of three years instead of one season. <clears throat> Further, much steeper side slopes of the already constructed embankment sections adjacent to failed section was adopted, one in four, normally adopted. The lift thickness adopted uh, during the construction or the closed section was much thicker than the allowed one. No arrangements were made for the controlling of reservoir filling. So it failed during the first reservoir filling. So if you see the foundation, <clears throat> Foundation in the breached portion, you can see the untreated cracks and joints. Many wide, deep and continuous joints were seen running from the upstream side to the downstream side, both the longitudinal and transverse, covering the whole area of the breached portion. No ceiling of this time and cutoffs were not provided. We agree for a min, min, very uh, low min, um, irrigation projects, cutoffs were not provided, but it's, it was a 30 meter high medium uh, irrigation projects, it should have been provided. So the depth of the water in the reservoir had risen from zero, uh, zero feet to 46 feet over a period of just 20 days. The maximum rise in a day was of order, of the order 11 feet. A day before the reported failure, the reservoir had recorded a rise of six feet. Even at the time of failure, the reservoir was on the rising strain. But unfortunately, or fortunately, unfortunately only I have to see the people living in the downstream uh, side of the dam uh, have noticed uh, muddy waters coming from the downstream slope of the dam, which was ignored. If you see this section, uh, you can see the true sense of the homogeneous material. It's not having any filter at all. It is supposed to, if you remember the cross section which I showed, the filter material has to be there, but it's not there. No arrangements were made for the controlled reservoir filling. And uh, if you see the longitudinal cracks were there in the downstream uh, portion of it, gullies were, uh, rain cuts were seen and gullies were seen. It was difficult to confirm by visual inspection of the breached section, uh, any chimney filter was provided or not. Chimney filter, so that is why uh, extensive uh, three phase uh, investigation, geotechnical investigations were done um, by CSMRS at different point of the time. And in uh, CWC, in consultation with the CSMRS provided uh, at the end of the investigations, what we have to do, uh, we say um, CWC and the CSMRS said, abandon the structure and construct a structure uh, in different uh, dam alignment but that was not affordable. So we have to give a modified section of the unbreached portion and the breached portion. So unbreached portion has to be uh, the downstream, entire downstream was moving and it was having a lot of distresses and uh, vertically that was cut and the it was rebuilt. And um, since the cutoffs were not provided, 
the dam was uh, in from the upstream phase was uh, uh, provided with the extra precautions and it was grouted and the modified section for the breached portion also was provided by using the uh, geotile synthetics materials this is the a unbreached portion dam section it was cut trimmed off and the unbreached portion will be constructed and the up, um, unbreached portion are covered with the, the good material soil material and covered with the geotextiles uh, non woven geotextile uh, to function as a, a filter and then geo membrane and then uh, upstream phase was provided with the geo membrane for giving the water tightness and then this is material is spreaded and you can see it is compacted with a good compactor and this is the trimmed downstream phase of the dam you can see and this is the grouting arrangements which was done on the upstream side of the embankment this is uh, uh, yeah downstream portion this is what uh, non woven geo textile and the geo membrane and uh, this is the filter material which is being used for the construction of the dam coming to the conclusion part the failure of the embankment dam results in a catastrophic incidents major causes of the embankment dams are the concentrated leaks and internal erosion the structures are to be inspected frequently during the construction post construction and during the operation to detect any abnormal behavior of the structure documentation of the structure is very very important at all stages we in my experience we are missing out this documentation during the constructions at the pre uh, feasibility stage what was it during the construction and post construction what is the documentation available we are very helpless in deciding about giving the solution to any kind of in structure which is in distress type of distress in the structure to be recorded in detail proper planning and investigations are required to find solutions to the distress good quality control and quality assurance is mandatory during the construction stage to avoid the distress instrumentations are to be installed in the structure to monitor the behavior of the structure with this i am coming to the end of my lecture and i thank uh, igs guntur chapter uh, and the college and specially my thanks are to uh, professor rao for giving me this opportunity to address all of you on embankment uh, dams distress and manifestation thank you so much and this is a works of um, our big team of uh, csmrs not this it is uh, my personal experience only it's a experience of my big team thank you so much thank you madam for the excellent presentation before question answer session i will share google form link and its purpose is uh, sharing the pdf content of the lecture and the feedback of the participants now i request the participants to copy <laughs> Uh, link google form link and this is the google form link i request to all of you copy the link and its purpose is sharing the pdf content of the lecture and your feedback now i request participants send their questions to chat so uh, i will make it as a everyone just wait now uh, i think all of you observe the google form thing so uh, now i have sent to everyone now i request participants to send their questions to chat madam kindly observe the chat yeah i am already started looking at it am i audible now yes yes yeah okay the first question is uh, how good is fly ash mixed with clay as material for rehabilitation of earthen dam uh, dr sk sharma has asked 
so what i would like to say is for retaining uh, water retaining structures better to avoid the fly ash material because if you see the fly ash it's a non cohesive material totally so if you mix with clay also and specifically for rehabilitation of the earthen dam uh, even for construction of the earthen dam we are not allowing so far even uh, the updated version of the is code we have not incorporated in into it, into it but provided in the non critical sections you can use the fly ash material for the construction of the embankment dam or uh, anything but in the critical sections we cannot uh, um, allow it though it is a frictional material having a good strength but it is totally non cohesive in nature for the construction of the embankment dam the first and prime of course uh, criteria is permeability next is uh, shrinkage limit another is plasticity index the plasticity index of the fly ash is uh, generally non cohesive only mostly non cohesive and the, the plasticity index of course non cohesive shrinkage limit is very high that also we cannot allow and the permeability yeah of course it is semi pervious or pervious drainage characteristics it has so we don't use it sir thank you Se second one um, for the garada case study uh, miss uh, dolarai choudhary has asked we see textile below the liner on upstream side yes ma'am uh actually to cut short it's very, it was very difficult for me to complete it in one hour so i had to take i think one and a half hours for <laughs> presenting my study uh, topic um, i miss what i missed was what all the investigations we did it the permit when we have to do the permeability state of the existing unbreached portion uh, the permeability was very poor Uh, total water the water loss were there when we he were tested with the permeability test so we have to provide the water tightness uh, for uh, to the structure since um, you know how the structures are planned so i can't say it in a public forum like this so to rescue those things we have to adopt these kind of design it is exclusively for this project only maybe a first one uh, as far as the embankment dam is concerned so if you have any detail you want to know it you can come to our office at any time we we i'll uh, explain you in personally sorry okay thank you and uh, next is from uh, kiran kumar what is the tentative depth of investigation of earth fill with the with reference to height dam in case of non presence of rock strata so this again it is a big uh, uh, topic actually uh, people always come to us how much we have to investigate um, over burden actually we are selecting the uh, construction of the earthen dam because uh, the uh, strata, foundation strata is very weak but we can strengthen it what we have to have is uh, piping through foundation we have to avoid so with the design uh, um, parameters we can do it depth uh, with reference to the height specific codes are there you can refer to it and then um, we can go for at least the equivalent to the height of the dam you have to investigate it and uh, rock strata it's not required or you have to go up to the rock strata but there are design means available how you have to design it so that are available if you want to know that in detail you can just write to me my email id i think everybody can note down um, chitra009 at the rate of gmail.com if you write to me i can send you those details and the second question from mr kiran kumar is specifications of clay material in case of zoned composite dam since clay exhibits swelling characteristics usage of fly ash material i have already uh, explained you usage of fly ash material uh, we cannot allow usage of fly ash material for the critical sections and the specification of the clay core material like i said sir uh, 
the first criteria is shrinkage limit shrinkage limit if it is lower the shrinkage limit higher the swelling uh, characteristic so the shrinkage limit is uh, limited to 12 and should not be more than 25 also so that is the first characteristic and uh, for uh, the permeability criteria it should be at the power of minus 7 cm per second Uh, in case of a normal soil and if it is a dispersal soil uh, then it is to be limited to 10 to the power of minus 9 the permeability water tightness should be more uh, so that uh, even the smallest particle present in the embankment material is not uh, going away with the flow of the water but in the case of swelling soil the criteria differs mm, the higher uh, Uh, the swelling potential uh, you the density you have to choose should be loose so that it has the uh, pore uh, pores for the volume expansion and the higher the dense uh, the, the of the soil more will be the swelling potential so you have to be very careful and the moisture variations it you have to better avoid it so then with that the design criteria if you fix it then you will be able to manage it and uh, if you see um, that is what uh, what is the optimum moisture content you have to adopt for the construction of the dam, embankment dam uh, there are many school of thoughts which one you have to do for homogeneous dam and at the clay center of the clay core or at the contacts of the clay core and with other zones that you have to be very careful and uh, next could be provide nwgt or composite drain with the stones on uh, downstream side uh, yeah ma'am you are uh, this is again by miss uh, dolorai chaudhary you have to tell me what which one i have to use i think if i talk in detail about what is to be <laughs> Uh, mention uh, okay we we will think of this and then i'll just to send you uh, my answer to it for the garada yesterday she is not leaving uh, we see geo textile below liner up inside i think i have answered this and what is the remedy if a highly expensive is available locally for embankment constructions i think uh, 25% of what we have to do i have just to mention it there are uh, we have to take care while designing those kinds of thing that is why we call it as a hardening zone and the casing zone uh, the moisture variation in the expansive soil we cannot afford to have it we have to give a control get a control over it uh, we have to design it accordingly can you briefly talk about the titan dam failure usa 1976 Uh, Mr. Mohan Ramanathan is asking during the first trip, what were the precautions to be taken in the design? Uh, actually, Titan Dam, it is a very interesting story. Uh, you can uh, study about this in the internet. Many people are even post failure analysis. People are doing it. Problem was, it the first leakage was uh, found out in the contacts of of the structure and the abutment. and this is this failed in during the first reservoir filling and uh, with the uncontrolled rate of reservoir filling because it was raining uh, on the 4th of uh, june 1976 or 74 i think and uh, within 4 hours of after seeing the leakages it just the gushing of water coming out and it failed it and 11 people died out of it the main reason was the uh, filters provided in the cut off foundation was single filter only and many the problem was many fold actually uh, inadequate investigations we can see uh, the abutment was the geotechnical investigation of the abutment was not properly studied and uh, the water traveled from the reservoir through the abutment to the downstream portion at the contact of the embankment dam to the abutment so that is what the reason and um, it's a classic case everything whatever i have included in my conclusion uh, monitoring was not proper and uh, or uh, after seeing the small leakages also only one person was there 
and uh, he notified the appropriate authority but care was not given and it just gushed even today the spillway which is standing without any support you can see uh, the uh, in the google map and um, what are the precautions to be taken in the design of embankment dams for uh, earth, earthquake zones earthquake zones like i said in the beginning of the uh, my lecture itself uh, you have to go for uh, it's better to go for uh, uh, rockville dam than uh, the embankment dam embankment dams are not good in for the uh, highly seismic prone area um yeah the precautions yeah material proper material you have to um um select and the material which is susceptible to liquefaction you have to avoid uh, like that many things are there and what are the uh, this is from dr khanna uh, what are the immediate safe uh, remedial measures for embankment dam in stresses and um, dr khanna that depends on the what kind of distress like i said it may be a transverse cracking it may be a longitudinal cracking generally we say longitudinal cracks are not dangerous at all but sometimes why the reason if you find out then it is dangerous if it is a very wrong very about the depth of the crack and those things are very important and immediately you have to provide it you cannot wait for more time because this distress it could be aggravating once the water is going inside those kind of a cracking it will lead to a disaster and especially uh, the transverse cracking that is because of what tension in the structure and maybe because of the um, and uh, the distress in the crest low low lying in the area in the stress maybe some portion of uh, the material inside uh, the structure is loose so that is why you are excess so you it is to be distress should be immediate you cannot wait for more time uh, if you are having a fever you may try to um, um, slow down your fever or get rid of that fever with the tablet but uh, uh, at this point of time you have to look into each symptom very carefully so distress in dam you cannot afford to it so you have to rectify it immediately yeah i think uh, we are ending with the yeah any other questions hello further questions you then is to your mail madam yeah uh, what yeah one more question uh, okay. what, this is uh, mr ravindra vasa what are the measures to stop the leakage of water in construction of the dam uh, no i don't understand this question uh, well, during the construction of the embankment there is no leakage of water um, leakage is movement of the slopes i can uh, consider uh, at the toe of the movement uh, some kind of embankment or with the sandbags uh, you can try to arrest the movement of the slope uh, slope which is sliding like uh, what is this done in kasingdan dam uh it was uh, the foundation itself it was very weak uh, so they expected that the failure failure of uh, some kind of movement of the structure may happen so they that uh, cassington dam was a very lengthy dam uh, and uh, it was highly instrumented dam with a lot of uh, drainages and all so when they see we drew these instrumentations uh, the upstream slope of the dam is moving immediately after the end of the construction then they have they have stopped the movement of that upstream slope by providing a berm at the, the upstream slope uh, toe at the end a toe of that uh, slope so by that they could able to arrest the movement of the dam and the dam was uh, res uh, rescued and uh, res and it was filled and even today it is functioning very well and it is a tourist spot you can uh, in you can read about these things in the internet as well mm, yeah but if you have the instrumentation that is the last point of uh, my conclusion uh, 
uh, with the observation and the instrumentation and the monitoring properly you will be able to avoid the any kind of disaster which is happening have you uh, one gentleman is asking have you worked on any tailing dams can you please give those cases in india and the difference of tailing dams with the embankment dam uh, yeah we ccsmrs has worked with the tailing dams also uh, the oldest case which i can remember is khudremukh uh, dam uh, and uh, we have been um yeah uh, the basic problem is tailing dam is not uh, used for the water, uh, water it's not a water retaining structure and embankment dam for water retaining structures is different than uh, the tailing dams uh, so yeah and it is uh, yeah i think uh, we are coming to the end of very enriching session i think uh, more, no more questions i think okay madam so thank you for the excellent lecture and the lively discussion at the end and yeah thank, thank you sir thank you to dr r chitra madam and the participants so thank you mamla thank you thank you so much thank you